For 2024, you won't see a lot of changes to the exterior. It still looks like Porsche. It has these beautiful quad headlights. It has that elegant light bar across the tail. Big changes on the inside. And then there's this. This is the S edition. It now comes with a V8. There's also a V8 in the top end GTS. In prior models, the S edition had a V6. The base model still gets a V6, 348 horsepower. So that is no shy beast. This one has 468 horsepower in the V8. So much more powerful and a lot more fun. You'll see carbon fiber details like these on the fender. You'll see gloss black details here, cameras and sensors all throughout. It still has these beautiful quad headlights that are very iconic for Porsche. And it still has that iconic Porsche Cayenne look and shape. In fact, if you didn't know this was the 2024 edition, you probably wouldn't really know by looking. You'd have to really look for some very small details to know the difference because it is such a classic and iconic looking car. One thing that you will note for 2024 is the price. It's about $10,000 more, depending on the model, than the 2023 model. That's because there are more standard features included. Porsche has sort of narrowed down the options and the packages. There's still a lot of options and still some great packages, but there's a lot more standard equipment in the base model and then of course the S trim that we're in. It starts at $79,000 for the base model. This one starts at $97,000. With all the options and the details that are, have been added to our test model, it's well over $100,000. But that is nothing compared to the GTS model, which is almost $200,000. Truly a luxury car for the performance enthusiast. The cargo area is pretty spacious. I want you to notice here, I've got a tote bag and a suitcase. I could fit probably four across and I'd still have space here. There also is a little panel here. There is a cargo cover here, which you can remove, but it also has guide uh, guidelines here in the door panel, the door wall. So it makes it really easy because it's luxury. It should be easy, really easy to um, pull it out to cover your cargo area or to not cover your cargo area. I will say the only way to lower the center row seats is from the center row. You can't do it from the rear, which is eh, a little bit of a disappointment, but uh, not using, not having a third row and using seats all the time, it's not a big deal. And then there's this other button here. And I was very curious because I looked at the button, I could not figure out what it was trying to tell me. And so then, of course, as we recommend with every feature in a car and every button, go ahead and push the button. And notice here, this is an automatic uh, trailer hitch that pops out and then retracts by pushing these buttons. Now this is something on the German edition. It's don't think that we'll have that in North America. It's a little expensive. Something I guess they use more in Germany than we use here or use more in Europe than we use here. And I'm still trying to make this car go up and down. I did notice it moving before, but I might have actually confused the computer with all of, with pushing the button over and over again. Well, it was working before the car was raising up and down, which is great if you need to get uh, things, lo load things into the car or load something like a dog or a dog crate into the back of the car, it's really helpful. And that shows you something that we always say to people and that is push the button. Find out what that button does in your car. Cars can do some amazing things like give you a retractable trailer hitch and then put it back away. But you wouldn't know unless you push that button go ahead and push the button. Just don't cause any danger to yourself or others and learn all the great things that your car can do. So considering that bump price and the bump in power, what do you get for your money? Well, you get a very beautifully redesigned elegant, probably one of the most elegant performance SUVs on the market. It's all Porsche and it's really beautiful. And I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna put my foot on the pedal here and start it up because I want you to see 
some things here. You should be able to see the screen here. This is a $1,500 add-on. This is a passenger screen. Now, when I say you should be able to see this, I can't see it. And that's one of the really cool things is that this is has a, a shield here, it's a treatment. Uh, it's inset and treated in a way that the driver cannot be distracted by that screen. But what you have here is a full, long, linear piece of glass that spans the entire dashboard. The multimedia system is here. There is a full driver information screen here. And then there is a passenger screen, which is a really nice detail. All of the climate control is right here in this panel. We'll see if this is something that makes it to the next uh, redesign of the Porsche Cayenne, but I kind of like it. It's a single panel. It is haptic, so you can push it and you actually see the whole panel move and you can uh, turn on or off things like the uh, vented seats and heated seats. And then you have actual buttons here, toggles actually, that you can toggle up or down for uh, setting the cabin temperature, fan speed, turning the whole system on or off. And then over here is our radio volume dial. So the, the tactical things that you need right there are right there. Uh, everything else is gonna be right here in the multimedia screen. And then we have this little uh, compartment here and in there is where I find my wireless phone charger as well as two USB ports. So I've got two USB ports there. I've got my wireless charger. Then I've also got a little cubby here, which is a convenient place to put maybe a second phone. If you're going to connect it with a cord, that's not such an uh, inconvenient place to put it. And then I've got two cup holders here. Now this is the German spec model, meaning it's built for Germany. They actually brought it over here to let us uh, test drive it before it rolls into dealerships. And one thing that the German model includes is this, an ashtray. We don't usually see these in the North American specs. There's actually an ashtray in the back seat as well. And I'm just gonna say, Porsche, take the ashtrays out of the car because smoking in the car not only ruins the value, it ruins the leather and makes these cars smell bad. You should discourage people from smoking in your cars. I hope I didn't offend anyone. In addition to the ashtray, you'll also find an actual cigarette lighter. So you can use this little power port for uh, putting in an adapter. So that's your third power point. In the front seat, there are two USB ports and I believe a cigarette lighter in the back seat as well. So uh, everybody has all the power that they need and you still have those cigarette adapter style power ports if you have something that you need to adapt, maybe a radar detector. So some things that are classic Porsche in the interior of this car. So first of all, these grab bars, classic Porsche. The embossed Porsche logo here on the seats, seats with sort of wide side bolsters. I'll show you this, let me move my bag. So you can see how these bolsters um, uh, kind of angle out here. This is to really hug you as you drive to give you that, um, that so you're not really uh, sliding from side to side if you're taking the curves. You'll also notice that the starter is over here to the left of the steering wheel, something that Porsche introduced a long time ago when they came to the conclusion that race car drivers were faster when they would start a race, they would have to hop in the car and start the car. If the starter was on the left side, they could actually start the car before they were even fully in the seat and buckled in. So they've always left it there. It's a heritage detail. What you won't see over here, and this is sort of a new nouveau Porsche heritage detail. And then I want you to notice this detail here, this sort of rose gold or gold colored trim. What we're told is that manufacturers are moving away from chrome and toward this gold colored trim. So when you see this gold trim, know that it's not just a design statement, but it also is an environmental effort to reduce the footprint that the manufacturer leaves when manufacturing these beautiful cars. The interior of the Porsche Cayenne has some very classic Porsche details. 
grab bars here, and then there's actually grab bars here and here, and one over there on that door in case your passenger needs to hold on. Um, the gear selectors here, this is something that we've seen in the Taycan and other Porsche models. So you push it up for reverse, down for park, for drive, and you push this for park. And then over here is the classic Porsche start button. Now they used to have a key that you would plug in over here and start, but now it's just a uh, button and you can just, oh look at that, even the, the door <laughs> setting, the seat setting light comes on. And then these classic shaped um, air vents here and over on that side and you have your uh, clock and uh, seconds and hour and minutes there which is a luxury car detail so it's nice to see that clock there and then you have some things that are kind of new so first of all your um, adaptive cruise control is here that's not new uh, paddle shifters here also not new but a new treatment and then we have this really cool um, inset steering controls on the steering wheel so this is going to control what you see up here in the driver information screen and you're going to control media over here and then here's the voice response so all of that is very typical and what we expect but it's got this new treatment with this gold surround which i really really like the driver information screen is digital and it is this curved glass and it's actually a solid piece and I'll show you you can see here it's a solid piece it doesn't have to have one of those hoods over it because it's not going to suffer glare because of the type of uh, digital screen that it is or at least that's what I'm assuming so you can scroll through things right here and change some of your settings look at that these are your driver assistant safety features right here so you can see the features that are at work uh, or you can set it for and the reason we're not getting navigation is because this is a German um, European spec model and it is not the maps are not calibrated for North America so or you can have what I might think of as a calm screen where all you see is the speed that you're driving and the speed limit of the road that you're on or you can go back and get more of your traditional gauges however you'd like to see it and it's just by pushing this little dial here and that's your back button if you need to go back so kind of cool there over here in the driver information settings you can also tap this little auto button right here that's the cayenne and you can actually make your sport exhaust system a little louder or a little quieter you can turn on or off the stop start so now it's on um, and you can set your drive modes here if you want to you can also use this dial here to set your drive modes so as i dial you'll see it went to sport and now it's in sport plus and i can dial it back to sport normal and then over into off-road if we want full traction when you have it in off-road this is the image that you get and it shows you the systems that are at work what it's paying attention to and there's normal and there's sport and there's sport plus and you can actually turn on or off comfort if you would like so you do have a lot of options for customizing this you can customize your suspension you can customize your uh, height level so you can raise the vehicle up for off-road mode and i can actually see it rising up a little bit there uh, it's, it's very subtle and each each of the four corners of the car moves a little bit at a time so we can actually just press that and set that back to normal there's our sport exhaust so a lot of ways to customize the car and the drive experience that you get and then here's our comfort so let's see what do we get under driver seat so i can actually set doesn't have massaging seats but i can set my uh, heat and cooling comfort same with the passenger seat and then uh, easy entry and I can adjust the passenger seat from here if I'd like to uh, which maybe is a little convenient if you're trying to make things comfortable for other people which is kind of a nice detail here is our Apple CarPlay it's not connected right now music also uh, we do have let's see we don't have the um, 
satellite radio connected. There's navigation. Again, that's not, uh, it's not active right now because we're not in Europe. If we were in Europe, we'd have no problem. And then we have all these other selections here. And you can actually customize things however you want and put things into this main screen. You can customize this. So you can have everything here in a big, easy to read screen, or you can swipe over here and get these functions. A lot of those functions are going to also be seen here on the passenger side screen. Also, one thing you can do with the passenger side screen that you can't do with the main multimedia screen is stream your favorite shows with your phone. How about that? So what can the front seat passenger do from this screen? Well, you have a lot of options. You can set navigation, which should also set up over on this screen. So if you're setting it here, then you can set it up that it should display over there and in the head up display. You can also uh, set the radio station. You can set up phones and make phone calls. You can add your device or the driver's device. So here's my phone. Um, so it really mirrors this screen here. It just gives it a little easier access. Uh, and you won't distract the driver. You can sit here and add things for the driver if the driver says, you know, find the closest Starbucks and you don't want to say, hey, Portia, where is the closest Starbucks? Then uh, you can find it. Maybe, maybe you want to find one that's closest to the highway. So there, it gives you a lot of options. And then also, and I'm not discovering exactly how to do it. I think there's another system that has to be enabled to stream, but you're able to, you will be able to stream video to this screen as well. That's actually kind of a nice thing. You can catch up on Vanderpump rules. You can watch the whole thing. The driver can only listen because she will not be able to see the screen from the driver's seat. One detail that Porsche included that makes me think that this car is all about you is this. So I have put my hair in a ponytail, which you know, some people are known to do. And the way that the headrest is set, it's pushing my head forward and I'm not comfortable that way, but I can just push this back. And there it's very comfortable for my ponytail. I love a headrest that moves forward and back in addition to up and down because it accommodates you, but still supports you for maximum comfort and safety. There certainly is a lot of beautiful new design in the front seat, but what about backseat passengers? So the first thing I noticed are these little paddles here. The seats fold down. They don't go exactly flat, but they do fold down and they fold down pretty easy. And then to get them back up, you pull that tab again and there you go. Now, what do rear seat passengers get? Well, the first thing is, I'm gonna pull that tab again and I'm gonna set the seat where I want it. So this is about as far back as it reclines. You can set it up a little more upright if you would like, if you need the space maybe for cargo. Um, but there is, this is really comfortable. And I'm gonna put the seat back a little bit. Really comfortable. So I do love this leather interior. $4,000 and change, maybe $4,200 for this green color. It's really beautiful. And I think when you're spending that kind of money, you should get the interior that you want. If, the, if this green is your uh, cup of tea, then you should go for it. Otherwise it's black or it's a, a beige color. And the beige is pretty too. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't argue about that. But um, in the back seat, we do not have, our model doesn't have a panoramic sunroof. That's something that I would highly recommend if you're going to have backseat passengers regularly uh, because this, the roof line is a little sloped here in the back. Even though we are not in the coupe version, we are in the SUV version of the Porsche Cayenne. The roof is a little sloped and it's got these very wide pillars in the back. So not a lot of light, not a lot of window space but uh, a panoramic sunroof would definitely change everything. Now I want you to notice here, something I do have that I'm not complaining about at all, and that is this leg room. So I've got a lot of leg room here. And it, this is, was easy, this car is easy to get in and out of. It's going to be fairly easy to install kids' car seats. It's not quite a 90 degree door opening angle, I'll show you. It opens almost, but not quite. So you do have a pretty nice wide space there to install kids' car seats if you need to. There are Isofix uh, latches, full latch set on both of the outboard seats. 
And then here in the center is a fold down. I have this in most cars. Cup holder, so you've got two cup holders here. And then you have all those beautiful details here. So the, the gold trim, the leather, the green leather, the uh, speakers, there's bottle pockets here, cup holders here. And then in our uh, center console, we have heated and cooled seats. I also like this. And this is one of the few SUVs, two row SUVs to do this. You can pull this seat pretty far forward and then you can push it pretty far back. So you can actually create more leg room or if you decide that you want that baby in the center baby seat all the way forward or you need more cargo space or uh, your dog wants to sit right here and be able to lay his head on the center armrest, well, you can do that by pushing, by pulling the seat all the way forward. So you get quite a lot of um, space. I think that's pretty, let me see. That's as far forward as it goes. And <laughs> you can see how far that is uh, from the center console. And then this is as far back as it goes. So it actually goes back pretty far. And it's impressive that Porsche decided to put um, the rails and the seats, uh, sliding seats in the two row SUV because that's pretty unusual. But all in all, I like the ceiling height. I'm 5'8", I've got plenty of headroom. It's really comfortable. I wish the seats did recline a little bit more because I'd love to take a nap while somebody else drives. But at the same time, they might be tossing you around back here a little bit because this car is fun to drive. Rear seat passengers get vents here and there's also vents here in the in the pillars between the doors there. There are climate controls here and buttons to change temperature and uh, fan speed. There is an actual cigarette adapter, <laughs> cigarette lighter and adapter port here for powering a uh, device. There are two USB ports and then ours is the European spec, so it has an ashtray, which probably will not be in the North American spec. Whether or not they call it an ashtray, I hope they keep this because it's a really convenient place to put your phone. So let's take the Porsche for a ride. Before we get going anywhere, I want to set my seat position. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my height to get to the point where I have my head-up display in perfect view and I have a clear view over the steering wheel and then I have really good foot position on the brake and the pedal. I'm gonna uh, move my seat forward or back for that perfect position. Your left foot should be comfortable and on the dead pedal or that flat panel to all the way over to the left there. And then I'm gonna position the steering wheel. So this has an electric button here on the lower left side of the steering wheel and I can position it up or down. I wanna make sure I can see all my gauges here. I can see all my gauges there. And then my uh, steering wheel is a comfortable reach. It's actually a little close for me. You want your arm to be slightly bent here and your wrist to be draped a little over the steering wheel. And then the last thing I notice is this is a little too uh, close for me. So I wanna be able to just relax into the seat. My shoulders should be almost into the seat back and I should have really good visibility. I should be able to turn my head either way and see everything I need to see. And so now that my seating position is set, let's pop it down into drive and head out on the highway in the Porsche Cayenne for 2024. So it's raining a little bit. I'm not gonna pop it into sport mode until I'm really comfortable because that can give you uh, lower traction and a lot more um, power and I want to make sure that I'm in a safe place if I decide to give it a little more power. They've had a lot of rain this year but they don't normally get that much rain so it can be a little slippery so we're going to be careful. We are in normal mode and that is the mode that um, You start off in in normal mode and there I just punched it just a little bit and it really did pick right up now we're coming into a curve and we're gonna go through this little tunnel here and where it's nice and dry <laughs> and this is fun it's so responsive 
It's so good. And you can hear that, you can hear a little bit of that throaty response. And now I'm gonna just, I gotta hit the brake, but I wanna put it in, in sport mode. Now we're in sport mode. Still in a lot of traffic, so it's hard to really uh, try out sport mode in this amount of, amount of traffic. Um, but it's not bad, and you do hear it. You might have to turn the radio off to hear it, but you can hear it. Not so crazy about this uh, wide view mirror. It's, it seems a little curved, and it's hard to get used to <laughs> what's going on in that mirror. It's a little interesting. It definitely is a curved mirror that presents a learning curve, because that's something you're gonna have to get used to. Turn on the AC and what you get is that new car smell. <laughs> I love that. I can smell the all the components and it just smells very rich and fresh. Uh, instantly coming out of the vents. There's only 381 miles on this car. Um, they ship them over from Europe for these test drives and it's such a delight to be the first one in the car to, uh, or one of the first people in the car to test it out. So I have a question, have you signed up for our newsletter yet? Every week we bring you fresh insights, a look ahead at the things that we're working on. Um, meet our writers, we highlight our writers and the things that they're working on. And we share with you news and, and insights from the automotive industry. Things that we want you to know as you're making your car purchase journey, as you're looking at different cars, as you're thinking about different things. What do you need to know? What do you want to know? Well, that's what we want to share with you. So sign up for our newsletter. There's a link right below. And I hope that you'll follow us on social media because everything that we share in our videos right here on YouTube, we also share um, snippets of these stories on Instagram, on Facebook, and then also on YouTube Shorts. So you can follow us on any and all of our social media channels. Those links are right below as well. So I hope that you will uh, follow us over on social media. And that's where we do some giveaways. We'll be giving away even more things coming up. So we've got quite a few things to give away. And you'll see that on our social media channels. That's where we do those giveaways. So if you would like to win some swag from a Girl's Guide to Cars, uh, follow us on social media. Thanks for joining us and can't wait to show you what we have coming up next on a Girl's Guide to Cars. So now we're, some of the traffic is starting to flow and we're able to drive the Cayenne the way it should be driven. So we are in sport mode and now I'm gonna t tip it over to Sport Plus, which eliminates your traction control. You should really be careful. And then there's this button in the middle and you might not even know that this button is here until you like happen to feel it or see it it doesn't have any markings on it at all. And it's called the sport response button. And what does that do? Well, tap it and it gives you, you see your tachometer go way up. It gives you 20 seconds of extra power. So this is something that we have seen on uh, other cars, especially some electric cars, they give it that boost mode. It's essentially boost mode. So for 20 seconds, you get extra power uh, and now I, I had that power, I did not floor the accelerator to take advantage of that power, but you have 20 seconds of extra power. So if you decide, you know, there's a great little straightaway coming and you wanna just have some fun or you wanna accelerate onto a particularly fun on-ramp on the highway and you'd like a little extra power, you just tap that button and away you go. Be really careful. I had it in Sport Plus mode, and that makes me actually a little nervous because you lose a lot of your traction control in Sport Plus to give more uh, propulsion, more power to picking up speed. And that's a little unnerving, especially on a highway where maybe it's been a little rainy. So, um, so I'm not so thrilled about Sport Plus really even in good weather conditions. That's something for the track and that's uh, something that you wanna put it into when you're using your track modes and uh, monitoring things like your lap time and your G-force um, 
uh, g-force around curves that's where your sport plus with the uh, reduced traction control is really going to be beneficial but i'm in sport and i will say this is lovely this, this i love the ground clearance of the porsche 7.6 inches so it gives you a really good clear view of the road i like the seating position you set up nice and high but also um, not super reclined the way we used to in sports cars that are low to the ground uh, maybe a little more reclined than what we like and um, it feels good the the position of the car feels good the power feels good and I'm going to take it off of the highway in a minute and hopefully find a couple of curves as we head up a hill to see what it's like in some turns. I'm not going to, not going to give it too much through those curves and turns because the pavement's a little wet and I don't want to dent the pretty. So don't dent the pretty, as they say. So let's see what it's like on the city streets. Okay, so now we are on a little bit of a curvy road. We're not going to be able to go really fast, but we will be able to try out the steering and the suspension here in the Cayenne. So we're still in sport mode, so a little tighter steering and a little tighter on the acceleration. So I can really feel the accelerator when I tap it uh, versus maybe more of a normal mode where you might have just a little less, a uh, little bit of a lag between the uh, acceler hitting the accelerator and when you get the, when it really goes into acceleration. So, wow, we, what a view up here. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna turn around the camera so you guys can see. We have this amazing view from the Panorama Promenade. Is there such thing as a bad day when you've spent your day in the Porsche Cayenne? It's hard to say that it was. In fact, I had a great time tooling around Southern California in the Cayenne S. I would gladly do it again. I love the sporty responsiveness. I love the sport response mode, that that's actually a mode with that extra boost while you're driving. I love the new interior, the gold trim. I love the leather, which I think is absolutely worth the $4,000 plus. I really like the passenger screen. Would love to learn how to use that one a little bit better. And I love the drive experience. The Porsche, even in normal mode, is very responsive and it's a lot of fun to drive. I can't wait to do it again. And now my only question is, do I want to drive the S model again? the base model, maybe the e-hybrid, or how about the GTS? Mm, maybe I'll just try to take them all. <laughs> 